There are three stages in a funeral. The first stage is when you go to the house and you say a prayer for the dead person. All right, that's the first part. Then you go to church and you say more prayers for the dead person. You're on holy ground. You are in a way asking God to give that person eternal rest. And we have several prayers. Usually, in other countries here we don't do it. Usually you have that within a mass. But here, because of the way things are done, it's very difficult to have masses in every funeral, otherwise we won't cope. Um, but that's the second stage. And then there is the third stage. The third stage is when the body is transferred to the cemetery, and there you have the burial, and you have some prayers. We call them the final farewell, the final commitment, all right? That's the normal funeral. Now, when you have uh, incineration, after the second stage, where you still have the body, then the body is taken to be cremated. And the church is saying, once the body is cremated, those ashes should be also interred in sacred ground, like any other body, so that there are two reasons for that. First, our belief in the resurrection, sort of the body is still together, not that it's important because God can do anything he wants, but anyway. But the body, sort of, the remains are there together. And secondly, which I see as important, in the sense that by being buried in a sacred place, there is a remembrance. It's not going to be forgotten. You know, you have something there to remind you that there was so and so a person in the past. The first generation will remember it, and the second generation will remember that person was related to them. That's mainly what the church is saying. Now, the church said in the last document also, something that it said before, but people probably didn't know it, that it is not in favor of sprinkling ashes in rivers or in the sea or on land, you know. So have members of the clergy scattered ashes before? They have, yeah, they have, because people wanted it and we tried to accommodate people. But now the church is saying clearly, unless, unless because there's always sort of, we, we try to understand the wishes of people and why they have those wishes. And the church is saying, unless there are special reasons for accepting that thing to happen, then it should not be allowed. So if somebody does it just because he wanted to show that he doesn't believe in the resurrection, you know, and this sort of thing, then you, don't, you can't do it, you know. But uh, if you die at sea, what happens? You know, they, they bury you in the sea. Um, so w we have to be reasonable, really, when it comes, and not to have uh, individuals pressing for things which they know we cannot accept, and vice versa. If somebody wants something which we can accept as priests, sort of, you know, then we try to accommodate. But uh, the best thing to do, with, that's what the church is saying, is to have the three stages, and the last stage will be that the box with the ashes is put into sacred ground that is in a grave, all right, in a cemetery. And what do the church believe happens to people's souls if they're not buried in sacred ground? I don't think anything different happens because the doctrine is whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you are, at the last day there'll be the resurrection of the dead. That's what we believe, it's a belief. And beliefs sometimes are difficult to understand. But uh, whether ashes are spread or not, whether they are interred or not, whether it's the whole body that's interred or not, when the time comes, we believe, for the resurrection of the dead, which we don't understand how it's going to happen, we don't understand it, um, then it will happen, it will happen. I don't understand how, to be honest, you know? <laughs> but I believe that once that is the teaching, Christ resurrected from the dead, and because of that we know we'll resurrect, then I'll accept it, I'm not going to argue with a belief.